Hey guys, my ser I hope you all are doing well. Um, my sermon today on my birthday is called the, the Seduction of Sin. And I will explain that in a few minutes. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do and what you're about to do to say to me, Lord, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Use me as a vehicle and an oracle for you, Lord Jesus. Hide me behind the cross. Let Rachel die and your spirit take over and live in me, God. I know where, um, kind of where I'm going, Lord, but I need your strength to help me get through this sermon. God, help me to use your words to just say what you would have me say. In the name of Jesus, amen. I was thinking about sin, sin of all kinds, whether it's sexual lust, whether it's gossip, whether it's um, reading inappropriate material, uh, whether it's whatever it is and something occurred to me um there's this verse in proverbs in the bible that talks about um uh um that talks about lust being like a woman and and how she lures a man to trap him and it's a really powerful verse i don't know where it's found but it's not a verse but it's a story in proverbs and it is just so um on par with what sin does sometimes most times sin starts as this little what we call a little indiscretion uh we could talk about um uh, um gossip you can let's say if you c kind of hear a story about something and you kind of just get with someone who also knows that person and just say something a little you, you know might be untrue but once that word hits your mouth something sparks in you and you just want to do it more and more and more and more see that's what sin does sin is basically um it's not only missing the mark, it's going against the will of God for you, like what, whether that will is to speak well of people, whether that will is to wait for marriage to have sex, whether that will is whatever that will is. Basically, sin is going against God's ultimate purpose for your life. And sin doesn't start with the big, um, with the big thing. It's, sin usually starts with a, a thought. What if I do this now? Um, what if I just take, what if I just think, about taking that drink or not even think you can just think about it silently let's say i'm an artist so i'm better with explaining things let's say you're watching something on tv one night it's late and you're like kind of tired and this alcohol commercial comes on uh, with some 
for some beer, right? Um, and you're watching the commercial and the thought hits you like, um, So you're watching this commercial and the thought hits your mind that maybe that brand of alcohol would be good right now. I need something to take the edge off. It's been a hard day at work or whatever. And then, and then you, you don't do anything about it at that moment but something else happens let's say that you go to work um two days from then and your boss really gets on your nerves and then you go home and then you're like oh i need something to take the edge off one one drink is not too bad Jesus turned water into wine, so he doesn't have anything against alcohol. So you you take that one sip, and then you take another, and then you take another, and then you drink the whole glass, and you're like, oh yeah, that feels good. And then you go to bed and wake up the next day, and something else happens. But because it works so well for you, the last time you you do it again, and then when it happens the third time you do it again, and now it's even more, and then it go gets out of control from to the point where you're drinking every night and where you're you can't control yourself because you need to be soothed and, and the alcohol seems to do it. Now, disclaimer, I'm not saying anything against uh, people that like to have a glass of wine, but what I am saying is be careful where you let the sinful thoughts take you because the thing with sin is it doesn't look like sin when you first do it. It just looks like something that'll take the edge off, whether it be gossip, whether it be whatever it is. It just looks like something harmless that will take the edge off. I heard on Audrey Meisner say something wonderful when she talked about her affair and that whole story, which you can find in Marriage Undercover, which is a phenomenal book of God's restoration of marriage. But in that book, she said, sin will take you much further than you are ever willing to go. It might start with only one drink, but it will, it might end you up in rehab or it might start with only one hit of drugs or and it might end you up in drug rehab or it might start with just a little gossip with your friend and it might end up with all kinds of rumors spreading and you breaking the, the friendship. Um, or it might start 
with just one little romance novel you you think what's the harm but it might um cause you to end up lusting up uh dealing with sex and lusting after something you cannot have and losing your virginity before you get married because you think that because you begin to think subtly that uh, sex before marriage is okay and sometimes you don't even realize when you are doing these little things that your mind patterns are changing until it's too late. Sometimes these things don't end up to actions until it's too late. Every, everything with sin starts in the mind. Everything, everything with sin starts with a, with a thought. And um, those thoughts become actions. Those actions become consequences. Those actions become situations. And those situations can have dire consequences. Um, the reason I said a seduction, that's what sin does. It seduces you. It seduces you. It makes you want something that you know you shouldn't have. Because sometimes, let's be real saints, it feels good to be bad. Um, sometimes, I know with me, sometimes being a good little Christian doesn't feel good and it doesn't seem to profit anything and sometimes sometimes sin puts you kind of in a trance of um of if I do this, it will make me feel good and no one will know about it, so why not? But what, what happens is the more you entertain sin is the more it will tie you up and at the end of it, you won't even know who you are and whose you are. And let, let's be honest, sometimes it doesn't feel good to be good. Sometimes it feels good to be bad. I'm, I'm a movie watcher. I love movies. I love going to the movies. And you, you never see a movie with a happily married couple working it out, making love in their marriage. You always see movies of the forbidden fruit, like like somebody's, uh, you're sleeping with your boss, or a married man is sleeping with his secretary, or an older woman is sleeping with a younger man. It's always something forbidden. And because of our sin nature, we always are drawn to the forbidden. We like what's forbidden and what's, what's good doesn't, doesn't titillate our senses. Um, so when I think of this subject, I think of Adam and Eve, I think of Eve and the serpent. And the serpent, um, the serpent played on Eve's emotions. He didn't say, well, eat the fruit right away because he knew that Eve would say no. He subtly, slowly crept in with his lies and said, got Eve to question her own, her own thing of what she knew. 
and that's how sin starts. It will get you to question all of what you know from the Word of God. So, back to my drinking example, it will get you to know, get get you to get you to say, "Is drinking really bad?" The Bible didn't say that. It said being drunk was bad, but it didn't say anything about one drink. So the devil will play on your your uh, weaknesses and your lack of knowledge uh, when it comes to sin or um, when it comes to gossip. Um, he might say, Oh, you know this person is evil. She deserves to be talked about. So, talking about her is not a big deal. And then, it'll wreck your relationship. It's like, basically, the devil likes um, when you doubt yourself and what you know about the Word of God. And what I found about myself is if I'm honest with God, sometimes we try to plead the blood over things and um, try and do our religious thing over things, and that doesn't work. What works, at least from my perspective and my experience is to be honest with God and say, God, I'm over 30 and I'm not married and I, and I so, and I so want to have sex right now or God, I really want to gossip right now. I know I shouldn't or God, I really want to want to take a drink right now but I know if I do it'll cause me to go down a road that I don't want to go down help me God and he'll help you but if you but if you refuse or neglect to ask for help from the Lord or those around you it'll keep going and going and when it keeps going it will be like a tidal wave that you can't see your way out of. Isolation breeds contempt. You'll, you'll hate yourself for doing it. You know it's wrong and you'll have contempt for yourself. But the light brings freedom. I, the church is so afraid to talk about so many issues that we are just struggling and doing our our churchy behavior uh worshiping and praising and all that's good but we i'm praying for some pastors and some leaders who will be real so people will get healed people will get restored because when you sh shed light on an issue, the devil has no power. Issues thrive in the dark. Solutions come in the light. Let me say that again. Issues thrive in the dark. Solutions come in the light. And when you bring light to an issue, devils run out of it. But if you keep it in the dark, it festers and breeds cancer and mess. And that's what a lot of people are going through right now. They're, they're struggling alone in the dark. They're not telling anybody that they're dealing with all these addictions, all these gossip addictions, all these masturbation issues all these sexual lust issues, all these issues with anxiety because they're afraid. And when you come out with an issue, 
you'll realize that you're not the only one dealing with all these issues, whatever issues that you are dealing with. And there is power in community. So if you come out and say, hey, I'm dealing with gossip, or hey, I'm dealing with lying, I'm dealing with slander, this is, this is the awful part of me uh, that I'm dealing with. I need your help. And the church needs to become the safest place on earth to reveal your issues. But the problem is, we're often not a safe place to reveal issues. Because oftentimes in the church, people love to gossip about other um, people, especially pastors and ministers and, and all of those people. I, I don't know how many times I've heard about a certain pastor or a certain minister. Oh, did you hear what that person did? Did you hear? Did you, do you know what that person did? Instead of putting our arms around them and saying, sister, brother, I'm here for you. Pastor, I'm praying for you. I know what you're, I don't know what you're facing, but I need to know that I need you to know that God is with you and if you if you need some help here here I am but no we let we love to disable we we love to leave our own wounded bleeding and that is why people don't come into the kingdom because they're too afraid of being judged they know that they're not perfect they know they feel that they're not enough for god and because we in the church make them feel that way that's the problem we need to break that religious spirit and bring a spirit of love and acceptance and say brother sister we're there too some most times i think it's fear which um why we don't reveal our scars it's fear of being judged it's fear of um feeling not good enough it's fear of being rejected but but what we need to realize is we're not god only god is god only he has the right to judge people only he has the right to um uh, put people in heaven or hell. We don't. We didn't make heaven or hell. So we can't uh, put people in heaven or hell. All we can do is love them. And if we love people the way that they are supposed to be loved, um, they will want to come into the kingdom. And if we can be a safe and soft place to fall, People will be running to the kingdom. People are hungry for for God and for love and for a relationship with the true God, with the true Christ. Not a relationship with church, but a relationship with Christ. And the difference is having a relationship with a religious system and having a relationship with a person. Um, when I look at Jesus' ministry, he went to people that other people didn't go to. He loved people that other people didn't love. And he took people in his arms um, that other people rejected. I think we need to stop and and let people know okay. that there's a God that saves and that heals and that restores. And when we do that, they will flock to the kingdom. And when we put people first, 
before our religious system, they will be so grateful. I have often said, um, we should not start a relationship with people as a project. We should start a relationship with people because they're a person. We should become friends with people because they're an interesting person to get to know. And if God opens up the way for you to cheer Christ, that's all well and good. But if he doesn't, that's all well and good too. Because that could be a seed. And because that's a seed, that's, some, that's something that God can use to, to shed forth his, his glory. And the Lord desperately wants to show forth his glory through us. And if we would let him do so. But if we continue to just judge people off and put them to the side, what, what are we? We're not a salty church. We're a church that likes to trample on people and their emotions. And the more you do that is the more people feel hurt and unloved and unwanted. Excuse me. Call from mom. 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 Um, yeah, as I was saying, um, we, we leave our wounded when they, sh when we should be loving them, when, when they should be feeling wanted and feeling loved. We need to get this right, church. We need to get our love right. And that is that can also be a part of the seduction of sin to the seduction of sin is is not to celebrate people it's to bring people down and that's a form of sin too slander and and gossip and all of that is sin too and that's one major sin that the church has in spades unfortunately and we need to pray um for the lord to get our love right to see people the way god would have us see people and i think the way to combat the seduction of sin one thing is truth we need to tell the truth first to god or and those around us we need to tell the truth not only to god but we need to find somebody who we trust whether it be a pastor or a friend or a loved one and just say i'm struggling with this now i know you can't tell your truth to everyone he, but the Lord says to confess your sin one to another and you shall be forgiven. He wants so badly for people to live purposeful and free lives. He doesn't want people to live in bondage anymore. But in order to be free, we need to let the truth, 
but let the light shine into our dark places. So when the light shines into dark places, that's where freedom comes. But if the places continue to be dark, it festers and grows and the sin takes over your life. So feel, feel confident enough to find a friend, find a pastor, find a minister, find a, a group of people that support you so you can be honest because there's life in community there's death in solitude when you keep yourself in solitude the longer you stay in solitude solitude is necessary for a time but if you keep yourself in solitude it will destroy your life because that's why in prison, when prisoners uh, misbehave or don't follow the rules, they put them in solitary confinement. Because there's something with long-term solitude that is unnatural. And the Lord wants us to have a community of, of people, a community of believers to strengthen us, to light a fire under us, to inspire us. I pray that communities of people are coming together right now and, and I pray that the seduction and the subtleness of sin is broken. I declare that every little seed of sin and every little seed of doubt and every little seed of gossip and lust and anxiety in all its forms is broken. I declare that those things that would have sprouted into sin will not sprout into sin. I declare that that sin will be no more in our lives and I believe that it is possible. I believe that it is possible to not li to not live a perfect life but to live a sinless life. Not sinless in the fact we don't have our problems, but a sinless life to, to the fact that it won't rule us. It won't control us. Living in habitual sin is a problem. Sinning, making mistakes once in a while, that's just human. But living in habitual sin is a problem. And sometimes when you live in habitual sin uh, for so long, you don't even recognize it as sin. You think that it's just the way God made you, you're human, and that's what it is. But the Lord says, no, the Lord says, come out from among them. Not just them as in, that separate ourselves from people. Come out from among them is actually come out from our sins, come out from the unhealthy behaviors, patterns, thoughts, proclivities, propensities that are controlling you. And I pray that you'll come out from among them today. Lord Jesus, thank you for your freedom. Thank you for your love and thank you for your grace. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Okay, guys, I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye. I'm free. Such a blessing. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm free. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. 
Lost all of the rest of it. It's such a blessing. Praise God, hallelujah, I'm free. Be free today. Don't let the subtleness of sin destroy you and distract you. God is there for freedom. Who, him who the Son sets free is free indeed. And there is no condemnation through Christ. There is just freedom. So if you're feeling condemned today, that's of the devil. But if you're feeling convicted by the Holy Spirit, that comes from God. And He wants you, He loves you so much. He wants you to live the life that He's called you to live. That's, that's what's so dangerous about sin. Not that you won't get to heaven, because once you, I believe, once saved, always saved. The key with sin is that it dis detract tracks you and destroys you from what he wants to do in your life. So that so that's what he wants you to know that that he has so much more for you, so much more than you can ever think, dream, or imagine if you would just stop with um, these no, not stop if you would just let him take over these propensities he knows you can't do it alone he knows that you're trying he knows he knows and all he wants you to do is give to him and know that there is life after sin. There is life after sin. There is life after destruction. There is life after li divorce. There is life after infidelity. There is life after being a gossip. There is life after slander. And the Lord says, I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Sin creates death, but Jesus comes that we may have life. And he is desperate to give you the life that you deserve, that he, has get, that he died on the cross to give you. And that's what sin does. Sin, sin distracts and detracts from life. The reason why, the first reason why sin is a bad idea is not because of heaven. It's because it distracts and detracts from the life-giving breath that God wants to give you. He has so much for you, beloved. He wants to breathe into you his life, his his life-giving breath. He wants to breathe that into you. Because he sees in you, beloved, things that you don't see in yourself. And he wants to, to give you that one. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the life that you want to give us. To to your life, God. I thank you for dying on the cross to give us freedom. Lord Jesus, I praise you and I give you thanks for all that you have done and everything that you're going to do. I praise you in advance for the things that you are doing at this moment. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, guys, Thank you so much and see you next week. Bye. And be blessed. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. It will break every 
chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. It will break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. The Lord is saying right now to speak the name of Jesus over everything that ha is having you bound today. And by his spirit, I declare that it will be broken. Speak the name of Jesus over that gospel and spirit. Speak the name of Jesus over that lying spirit. Speak the name of Jesus over those so-called romance novels disguised as uh, so-called pornographic books disguised as romance novels. Speak the name of Jesus because the name of Jesus brings freedom. And after you speak the name of Jesus, get into community with believers who can pray for you and hold you up. Father, thank you for your word today. In the name of Jesus. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get behind. Victory today is mine. I declare that victory is yours, joy is yours, peace is yours, happiness is yours. I declare that in this moment, abundant life is coming where there is death. Lord God, I declare freedom right now for every person under the sound of my voice listening to this. Thanks, guys. See you next week.